Hello again, everybody. This is Jeffrey Daniel here. Today is July 11th, 2020. Still riding with you here in Lagos, Nigeria, you know, because we're still on lockdown. Some people on semi-lockdown, but hey, we're still riding it together. The lockdown has gotten longer. My beard's getting longer. I'm not going to shave until this is over. I'm not, I, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to let it grow. I'll be looking like a, a hermit or something by the time this is done with. But I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm just at home relaxing. So only go out to the market to get food or something like that. I don't do anything. So I'm just working in the studio upstairs at home. That's all I'm doing. Okay. So it's, uh, it's nice to be able to communicate with you again. And I appreciate you guys' uh, responses. And I appreciate the fact that you guys are engaging you know together with me in these issues because we're all in this together it doesn't matter what country you're in <laughs> we're all in this together this is a global thing that's going on and um one of the the main things that i wanted to talk about today is what's happening in america i have a dance brother named casper and i can't remember if it was in the late 80s or 90s that you know we were coming up with ideals to make movies with and different scripts and stuff like this he came up with a movie called The Divided States of America. Isn't that ironic? Here we are in 2020, and we are living and witnessing the divided states of America. America is divided. It's not something that's going to happen. The race war isn't something that we're on the precipice of anymore. It has commenced. I'm watching in disbelief and horror. Can I say disbelief because I could see where things were going. You could see the direction things are going in. Let me tell you guys one of the reasons why it's gotten so bad and it's getting worse. As I said before, we do not have concise leadership at the top. Yes, there is a president, but he's the president of the people who support him and follow him. If you disagree with him, if you're in the other party, you're his enemy. And that's not how you're supposed to run a country. That's not, not, even though he says he's a nationalist, that is not a nationalist ideology. That is a separatist. That is a divisionist. That is, that, this is what's happening. Let me tell you how deep it is, you guys. Do you know what Trump said to his supporters? He said, quote, we are in the process of defeating the radical left. When the leader of a nation addresses his nation and tells them that we are in the process of defeating, that is a declaration of war. He has told his people that we're, we are at war. When you're a president, you choose your words. As I said before, what you say carries weight. What you do carries weight. So when you come to your people and address them and say that we are in the process of defeating, defeating, that's like an act of war. A war is in progress. Who are you fighting? Americans. Because, you know, here's the thing about it. Every time we come out with... Uh, a mantra, a saying, because of what we're being uh, dealt unfairly, unjustly. So when we come out and say black power, as they did in the Olympics back then, as the Black Panthers were teaching us, black power, why do we have to say black power? Do we just wake up and get out of bed and just say, you know what? I, we, we, we need black power. No. It's a response to what is going on. We're not the aggressors. We are reactionary. If the Jim Crow had not been in place, if the, the police departments hadn't continued the system of racism, we would just get out of bed and be Americans and go on about our daily lives. We are black, so why would we have to say black power? We look in the mirror, we see black. You look at us, you see black. Why would we have to say black power? So now, why do we have to say black lives matter? Why do we have to say we shall overcome? 
and you guys take what we say and twist it and use it against us. So now you're saying, black lives matter, all lives matter. Okay, fair. All lives do matter. Not one black person is thinking that other lives don't matter. That's not what we're thinking and it's not what we're saying. It's what you're misconstruing for the benefit of your own. I'm trying not, I'm trying not to call you ignorant, which ignorant doesn't mean stupid, it just means lack of knowledge. From, from your own ignorant point of view that you want to spew back because if all lives matter, Shouldn't black be included in it? Look at the word all. Get, go get a dictionary. Webster, Funk and Wagner, whatever you want to get. Get a dictionary and look up the word all. It means all, inclusive, entire. It's, it's all. So if all lives matter, then you should care about blacks too. You can't come to us and say we don't care about white lives. You can't say that to us. If certain people are reacting in a more, how can I say, in a more violent way or in a more um, aggressive way. But us people as a whole, we grew up loving a white Jesus. You know what, this is what's so, and I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to say black people are more this and that than anybody else, but think about it. Coming out of a black continent, Africa, coming up with a black, um, you know, society in the islands and in the Americas and that, all the way to Brazil or wherever. And you brought us a white savior and said, this is your path to God. What did we do? We got down on our knees and we said, yes, Jesus, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus, yes, Jesus. We shout about it, we pray about it. We speak in tongues about it. We roll on the floor about it. We're even more holy about it than you are, the people who gave it to us. That has to be a very compassionate people. Because if we were to tell you, no, Jesus is not white, he's black. God is black. You will not accept that. On, 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 on the, uh, just on the strength of racism, you won't accept it. If we go to Arab and tell them that uh, Muhammad is black and Allah is black, no, they won't accept that. But you told us that Jesus was white. We loved them. We love him. Yes, Jesus loves me. So we are very compassionate people. It's in our music. It's in our dance. It's in our walk. It's in our talk. I'm not saying, you know, other people aren't greater, other people aren't better, but you guys, look at us. Look at what we bring to the table. Look at what we give societies. Look at all the the bonuses that we bring to the table. I'm not saying you're not bringing any too, but I'm saying look at ours as well, which we bring a hell of a lot. We, it has to be mutual respect. As I said before, that equilibrium, we need that social, racial equilibrium because that's the only way we're gonna move forward because we're running on systems that were built on colonization, enslavement, these systems were built on that. The, inst the constitutions were written on that. The, the, the national anthem was written on that. Yes, slavery has been abolished. Of course, we know that. Yes, colonization. Uh, countries have got their independence physically, financially. There's still financial colonization still exists. It's, it's still alive and well. That's another subject, we'll get to that. But what I'm trying to get people to see is what's going on right now. We're living in the divided states of America. It's divided racially and politically. Amer if Trump did this on purpose, or if this was just the byproduct of what he was doing, this, these are the results. I'm watching, I go on social media. Sometimes I don't wanna even look at social media no more. Looking at women in parking lots beating each other up. Women. Women. How can I, I don't want to see women. Who, who enjoys, unless you're sick, who enjoys seeing women just out there just going at it like that? And people are filming it. They're not really breaking it up. They're filming it. These are the progenitors of life. These are women. Do you, have you guys lost the value of, 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 of our, the, the female species? It's sickening. But 
because we don't have leadership at the top, he's contradicting his scientists, he's contradicting his vi vi virologists, he's contradicting medical experts. See, if it was a collective and they got together and had the meetings and knew what we're going to say to the American people and we agree on it, then they come and they tell us, then you're not going to have people walking in stores, I have my right to, I don't need to wear a mask. You're not going to impose on my Second Amendment and blah, blah, blah. What is all this about? If you guys look back at 1918 when the Spanish flu was there, everybody wore masks because everybody collectively knew that we've got something here that's dangerous. We need to protect ourselves. Like I say, don't go extreme to the left or to the right. Come to the middle, we can find a compromise. You don't need a mask on 24 hours. You don't need to be sitting on the house with a mask on. You don't need to be in a car driving with a mask on unless there's other people, uh, you know, passengers that are you know, outside of your immediate family or whatever like that. But when a, a mask is required, I think we should because it's to help protect us and to help protect others and to stop others from you know, spewing up the virus at us. So... You guys, we need to try to work together. Our government's not doing it. I'm not here to bash Trump. I'm not, if you're a Trump supporter, hey, I love you. If you're a Trump supporter, I love you just as much as whoever's going to support the Democrat um, nominee. I'm not here to hate people because you have a right to choose your political affiliation. That's, that's nothing against me. But I hate the leadership and the direction that he's taken everything and everybody. And you guys who are following him in that, you're going to look back on history. History is going to speak for itself. When you look back at history and realize what you were part of and what you were helping do. Because what this thing is escalating into, it's getting nasty. It's getting very nasty. And when you realize that you are helping to feel that. So now we have a black group reactionary group you know this started they had some before but I like to go back to 1965 when they had the deacons organized you know where deacons come from they come from church so these guys were Jesus loving I hate, I hate to put this there but they were white Jesus loving black people but they were being attacked by the police department, by vigilantes group, by the KKK and they couldn't take it no more so these guys formed their group and they called themselves the deacons, as they were, deacons. They had 20 chapters going across Mississippi and Alabama. That's how organized they were. A couple of skirmishes broke out. Why did they get arms and come out? They didn't go out searching for people to kill. They protected their homes, their churches, their families. That's what they were protecting. Why? Because they were being attacked. Then it brings you to the Black Panther Party. Then it brings you to these guys now who are in Georgia. And these black men came out and they went into to Stone Mountain. And that is the, I think that's the headquarters of the KKK. And they went there because their women were being threatened earlier, previous to them coming out. And that's what made them arm themselves and said, no, not our women and not our people, no more. They marched out there and they had a what did they call those stuff? Uh, the megaphones or the mic. And they were calling out the extremist group. Hey, you guys, you want to come and attack us? We're here. Nobody came. They didn't even show up. Now, I'm not saying, oh, they didn't show up. Woo. No, I'm not saying. I'm glad they didn't show up. I do not want our brothers out there fighting in the streets like that. I don't want to see whites fighting in the streets. I don't want to see nobody fighting in the streets like that. Because... You're getting baited into this race war. And what's going to happen when the race war breaks out and you guys start actually shooting at each other in the streets like you're beating each other down now in parking lots inside of stores uh, in public places and whatever. Martial law. Police state. Now you think coronavirus got us on lockdown? Wait till you see the social lockdown if you allow this to happen. But at the rate you're going, that's going to be the next step. All of our social liberties are going to be gone. It's going to be like living in America is going to be one big prison. Maybe some people want that to happen. Maybe that's, that's their ideal of, of stopping progression. I don't know. 
Because what country wants to sell arms to its citizens? You know, I'm in Nigeria. You think all Nigerians are walking around with guns? No, I live in Japan. You think Japanese are walking around with guns? No, because if you, if you have guns casually at home like that, it's only a matter of time before a baby gets accidentally killed or a husband and wife gets into a fight and somebody goes for the gun or somebody says something to you and they don't like it and you take your gun and you're gonna go out to defend yourself, you're gonna use them. Now in America, it's, it's gotten so normal for someone to walk into a church and shoot people in a church, for people to walk into a mosque and shoot people, for people to walk into a school and open fire on students and teachers. That's become the norm. And the government is not looking at that like we need to stop it. Like when Barack Obama came out and said, we need to see how we sell guns. We need to put a, a limit or a restriction. I mean, you need, you need to pass a test to have a driver's license. You need to, to pass a test to do all these other simple things. So why not people be really, but why even have a test to have a gun? I mean, military grade weapons. Why do civilians need military grade automatic assault rifles? You're not going deer hunting. There wouldn't be much of a deer left. Brrr. <laughs> there ain't going to be much deer left if you shoot it. With, so that's not for hunting. These weapons are meant to kill people. The, R, the, the, the NRA, they're the winners. The NRA are the winners. And the big farmer, those are the people who are winning. While we're out there killing ourselves and poisoning ourselves. Um, what else do I need to talk about? Like I said, you guys are creating a culture of censorship. And I'm going to tell you why. When you go into stores and say, you know what? That's racist. Aunt Jemima on the pancake box. Uncle Ben on the rice box. The black guy on the cream of wheat box. Take it down. I grew up with these images. Now, Aunt Jemima used to be racist, pretty much. You can, if you look at the old Aunt Jemima, but they came and they, they revised that. They, they, they gave her a hairstyle. They gave her earrings. It's not the lady with the scarf on the head like a, like a nanny in the kitchen, you know, cooking up for, 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 for her masters or something. They got rid of that already. That, so they already made a step to do that. I'm not defending them saying that they should or not. I'm just questioning. Is this the best solution for us to walk in the stores and not see any more images of ourselves? I'm in Nigeria. I have Auntie Mama pancake, uh, Auntie Mama pancake soup here and mix because I love pancakes and waffles. Is, is that it? That we walk into stores and no longer see images of ourselves on the shelves? So that's going to make us feel empowered? So young kids don't see any of their images up there? Like I, when I was growing up and I was young? Snatching down statues, is that the answer? That statue's offensive because when you snatch it down like that, you remember? Cause and effect. Action, reaction. It's a semblance. Okay? If you really feel it's offensive to you, let's go to the government, let's have a talk about it and find out what we need to do about it to make it better. But if we just go out there in, in, in a gang and let's just throw them down, you, you're offending people. You have to understand that. It offends you, but now your actions are offending other people. Like they said, snatch down Winston Churchill. Yes, Winston Churchill did things that may have been considered racist, what he did in India, under his watch, they opened up a massacre in India and things like that. But he was doing what he felt was best for his nation in those times where the racial construct was the norm. So he's a hero to his people. So when you want to go and just snatch a statue down, now what are they doing? They went down and snatched down a statue of what? Uh, Booker T. Washington or Fregless Douglas. So now they're snatching down ours. So you can't do it that way. If you want them down, let's, let's get together and have dialogue and let's find out how we can resolve this thing. This thing is offensive, something, something. Let's put it in some type of memorial museum. As I said, like the Jews have the Holocaust Memorial Museum. The Japanese have the Atomic Bomb Memorial Museum. So maybe if we want the Civil War Memorial Museum, at the Slavery Memorial Museum, and put those images there so that young people can learn what happened and how it happened. 
Does that sound like an, a solution to you? Like I said, you don't have to agree with me. I'm not here to tell you what to think and what to do, but we're just sharing our perspectives. Maybe I can give you a better or a newer perspective. Maybe you can give me one. This is what this is, you know? So, this, but it's creating a culture of censorship. So now when we get online and we want to talk about our history, hey man, but that, that's offensive. Snatch them down. Is this, this is what it's going to lead to. This is what it is leading to. You got people like uh, General Saba Sutton Seti and Young Pharaoh, Polite, and these people. These people are, are having, what do they call it, Facebook jail or YouTube prison or something. And they're, they're, they're snatching people's things down because some people are saying that us telling our history the way it is is offending certain people. But these histories need to be told because these people don't know our history. I think we all need to sit down and, and properly listen to each other's histories. The good, the bad, and the ugly, because that's what brought us here today. History ain't going to be beautiful for everybody, but that's history. Then we learn how not to do this, what to take, extract, what to, you know, how to make it better for everybody. All right? And stop taking our mantras. Black lives matter. No, black lives don't matter. All lives matter. Wait a minute. We have a reason for saying black lives matter. We're saying black lives matter also. It doesn't just mean no, no other life matters. That's, that's not what we're saying. And you know it. You know it in your heart. That's not what we're saying. We're not saying other races don't matter. We're trying to say we matter too. So if you really believe all lives matter, then you would include black lives too. So if black lives said black lives matter, you would go, yes, they do. If Asians said Asian lives matter, yes, they do because all lives matter. If whites want to come out and say white lives matter, we'll be the first to go, yeah, you do. Why do we have to come up with a, a counter slogan to, to discredit your movement if your movement has merit and if it's justifiable and this is something that you're trying to stop because you're seeing your people being murdered regularly on the streets and now they're finding people being hung. And what do they say about the hangings? They're suicides. So suddenly in the year 2020, after all the hanging that had been gone in slavery time and the Jim Crow time and all that time, we waited for the year 2020 to now start hanging ourselves on trees for suicide. Come on, get, please get out of here. Anyway, um, for Trump to say that we are in the process of defeating the radical left, he is encouraging his people to come out and fight us back for what we're saying. You know what he just said? There's so much going on, you guys, and I'm trying to keep up with it. He just said that New York is now a hellhole because they're allowing them to write Black Lives Matter in front of the Trump Towers. Isn't that, <laughs> that ironic? But they're writing Black Lives Matter right in front of the Trump Towers, right at his threshold. So his reaction, now New York is a hellhole. The whole city, New York, he's calling New Yorkers hellhole. This comes out of the mouth of what is supposed to be the leader of the free world. The president of the United States of America is resorting to this kind of language and this type of abuse to his own people, to his own country. And you say that we're not patriotic because we get down on one knee? Or you say we're not patriotic because we're coming out saying stop killing us, Black Lives Matter? But the commander in chief is calling New York a hellhole? And he's saying that we're at war with the people who don't agree with us. You can't make this up. Okay? Um, huh. Another thing Trump is doing, and I'm not, I'm not anti-Trump. I'm anti what he's doing. I'm anti his ideology. I'm not here just to bash the guy. I'm not here bashing Trump supporters at all. I'm not here to bash you, your supporters. You're, you're free to support who you want to. Support Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, whatever. That's your right, okay? Let's get that straight, okay? So we, we don't need to hate each other. Trump, when he was running for president, and they were talking about his taxes back then, he said, you know what? I'm being audited right now, so I can't do it. But as soon as I get into office, you'll be, you, you're more than welcome to see my taxes. So now that they're asking for his taxes, and now that they passed tried to pass a law, one of the Supreme Courts or whatever, that we can see him, he's calling it a witch hunt. It's, it's a witch hunt. They're, it's, they're, they're always after me. They're, Wait a minute. You're the guy who said that we can see him. It, you guys, it, 
It's documented. He said on camera, you can see my taxes. When they came out and said, while you're being audited, there's, there's no reason why you can't show them. Then you can show them while you're being audited. So he squeezed, he wiggled out of that one. But he said that we could see them. He's been in the office over three years now. So now that we're asking to see them by law, he's calling it a witch hunt. This is what we're dealing with. I'm trying not to laugh, you guys, you know. Um, another thing, um, this Jeff Epstein and his partner, Mrs. Uh, Maxwell, be careful, you guys, because when Jeff Epstein was arrested and put under police custody, he miraculously committed suicide in police custody. Yeah, right. Do we believe that? Now they're saying that his partner, who has just been arrested on the police custody, they said, now she's on suicide watch. Let's see how this all plays out. This is interesting, you guys. This is really interesting. Let's see how this plays out. I can't predict it. I don't know because, but let's see how this plays out. Um, I don't want anybody to walk away saying that, well, Jeffrey's a conspiracy theorist. He's in the conspiracies. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I want to bring some things to your attention. I'm not telling you what it is. I'm bringing it to your attention and you decide, okay? Bill and Melinda Gates. First of all, how does someone who came up with computer programming and making computer soft and applications and, and Microsoft in this, how does that person suddenly become an expert in the authority in vaccinations, in virology, government and world policy? Who is making this man all of this? How does he just step up? Well, Bill Gates says, well, Melinda Gates says, because now they're saying that the vaccination should be tested on Africans first. The virus didn't start in Africa. What does it got to do with Africans that we should be tested first? In fact, Africa is having the lowest cases compared to the Western world. So it seems like you guys will be in more of an urgency than us. What, why would they say something like that? When? I'm not going into conspiracy, but you, you judge for yourself. 2012, they came into Africa. And with the Pfizer people, they have all this planned parroting and trying to put people on birth control and trying to help eradicate certain this and that. And according to reports, people wound up dying, paralyzed, coming down with certain illnesses. That's what they're saying. Also in India, they introduced vaccines and now there's a controversial issue because the initial report is that some people became paralyzed, some people got very sick with it, and certain people died. Then suddenly some people in the government said, oh, no, 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 that didn't happen like that. It didn't happen like that. People can get paid off to change the narrative, can't they? Because the initial report was how those people were suffering when the, the Bill Gates Foundation went over there with vaccines in India. So, they want to come and bring it to Africa and test it on the Africans? Why should Africans be your guinea pigs? If this thing is in your own backyard and now the uh, cases of coronavirus are breaking out much more exponentially in your own backyard, why would you even think to take it overseas? If it's that urgent and if it's that needed, why don't you, why don't you test it on yourself and see if it works? You guys need to look this up. Bill, Bill Gates Foundation in India, Bill Gates Foundation in Africa. Look it up for yourselves and see. I'm not telling you what it is or what it ain't. Look it up for yourselves. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm just disseminating some information that you may not have been aware of. And I think we all need to pay attention to because they're trying to say, shut down schools, shut down churches, da 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 da. And the only way to get back in is if you take a vac uh, vaccine. Well, let me tell you something. 
The flu has been going on for how long? Influenza has been going on for how long? I, don't, I have not taken a, a flu vaccination, and I've had the flu, and, I, and I've gotten over it. I've had influenza over there living in Japan. I sweated it out with teas and everything, and, and I was sweating profusely, and in the next three or four days, I got over it, and I'm good without a vaccination because vaccinations do not cure you. Only your immune system can fight off the virus. So what the vaccination does is to try to help your immune system to, to get that stuff out. But it's your immune system that actually defeats it. So boost your immune system, try to find things, get your probiotics, get all the things that help build your, your system up. And you guys eat so horribly that it, it's causing all these things to manifest in your body because of your, your poor diets of too much junk food, too much fried foods, uh, too much uh, carbohydrates, too, too much cholesterol, too much fat. All these things are killing you guys. Imitation this, imitation that. Artificial coloring, artificial flavoring, all these things, preservatives put in the food. The cool thing I like about Japan is that they put a preservative pouch in there, in the canister with your food or in the bag. They don't put the preservatives in the food. So you're not eating the preservatives. You see, there's a difference. So, I mean, then, check this out, you guys. If Bill Gates is allowed to tell countries, you need this vaccination, you need this. If Anthony Fauci is, then why in the heck is Dr. Sebi dead? And why did all these other holistic doctors start coming up murdered? In a period of time, holistic doctors were coming up missing. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. A cons a conspiracy theorist. You guys look this up for yourselves. Look up holistic doctors murdered. Holistic doctors missing. Look it up for yourselves. The information is out there. Dr. Sebi was a holistic doctor saying that we don't need these Western medicine. We need herbs. Do you guys understand what medicine is and where medicine initially comes from? Medicine comes from herbs and plants. That's where medicine originally comes from. So what is Western medicine doing? They're creating chemicals to imitate these plants and herbs and synthesize them for mass production. So when you take them, whatever uh, illness you have, so when you take these medicines, because they're synthesized in a chemical, it might uh, cure or assist whatever is ailing you, but the residue of the chemical elements are left in your body and they create another side effect. It's funny when you go to America and you hear these uh, commercials about drugs, they go, yes, this drug is good for this and it's good for that. Side effects could be drowsia, vomiting, nausea, blindness, that are, the list of side effects far outweigh the illness itself. And I, I laugh when I see that because you hear them listing the side effects for like another three minutes after introducing the actual drug. So, so what's the point? Just like chemotherapy, if you have a cancer, which cancer is the imbalance of your cells. So those cells start taking over your good cells. So what do they do? They kill every cell in your body. So now you don't have an immune system. It's the chemotherapy are killing over 90% of cancer patients before the cancer could even kill them. Same thing with prostate cancer. They're finding out that most of the men that have the prostate uh, treatment didn't even really need it because all men have a prostate and all prostates will enlarge. But there are things you can do to shrink your prostate. There are, are, are herbs that you could do, like turmeric. There's certain other things. You guys can look this up. The anti-inflammatory things that are natural, that can help you shrink your prostate, that you don't have to go to that doctor and get these harmful drugs and make yourself impotent that you can no longer perform sexually anymore. Because these guys are making money by performing these operations on you and giving you these treatments. They're making money for that. Look into it, you guys. Look into it. Maybe some is necessary because it has it is, it is, uh, progressed to such a stage that it's too late, so then maybe that's the only way. But there's a lot of people who aren't at that late stage and they didn't even need the chemotherapy, they didn't need the radiation. But because the, uh, the Board of Health has this uh, block that, oh, you have this, you have that, okay, but then this is what you need. That, doesn't, that blanket effect doesn't work for everybody. Some people don't need it. A lot of people don't need it. Maybe some do. 
you guys need to uh, wise up and check it out, okay? So I think I got everything that I wanted to say. Let me look through my, my notes right here before I wind up on you guys. Uh, oh, the last thing about Karen, okay? Even, we, first they called it Becky, and then they called the girls Karen. These are people who unjustifiably call the police on people who are just innocently not doing anything. And that's why they call them Karen. Now they said that Karen should be labeled a racial slur. I couldn't, if I was writing a movie, I couldn't write this. Oh, if he calls me Karen, that should be considered a racial slur against me. So now they, they, they have a way of anything that we do to defend ourselves, they take it and twist it and throw it back at us. Well, baby, if you're not calling the police on people who are committing crimes, well, you wouldn't be a Karen. So you don't have to worry about a racial slur. Don't do it and you won't be a Karen. Case closed. You won't be a Becky. Okay, go ahead. Make Karen a racial slur. Then we'll change another name. Then you'll be a Tina, or you'll be a Diana, or you whatever. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you all. I love you all. We all should love all. Because we're on this planet together. What are we going to do? What? Suddenly what? We're here together. So don't you think that we need to find a way to work this out together? Now, we need to get the black people out of the traumatization that they've been going on for hundreds of years. So we're trying to get our footing. And once we get our footing, then we can bring it to equalization because we need to get ourselves together. We're, we're, we're sick. We're sick in a lot of ways. And we need to heal ourselves. You, you need to allow us to heal ourselves. And if you don't allow us to heal ourselves, then the societies are always going to be unbalanced. And we're always going to have these conflicts going on to infinity and beyond. And you think you're going to live on Mars where there's no oxygen? You think you're going to terraform a dead planet? Good luck. Good luck with that. And if you get there, what are you going to do? You don't think you're going to be up there fighting over territory and fighting over class, or fighting over racial issues? If you haven't got it right here, how are you going to majestically, magically get it right there? If you can't get it right here first, how do you think you're going to take it to another planet and get it right? If you can make it there alive, if you can land there alive. These are pipe dreams, you guys. Don't let these, fire, these space programs are fireworks show because they're just orbiting the earth up until now. If they've gone to the moon or not, that's, that's, that's arguable. But anyway, for the past 47 years, if this is the earth, this is how far they're going from earth. That's where the space station is. This is what we're doing for the past 47 years, and they're talking about going to Mars. Good luck with that. You know? So, okay, I'm going to wrap this up, you guys. I wish you all a good weekend. I have released my song, Make Love Great Again. It's on YouTube. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple. It's on Facebook. Check it out, you guys, because love is the answer. I'm trying to help us unite. I'm not here to attack anybody. I'm here to help us see the errors of our ways. I'm here to help us get a fresh perspective that, hey, maybe we can do this better. Maybe we can come out of this epidemic better. And I hope we don't go into the race war. I hope America doesn't continue to totally divide itself because it's just going to make it that much harder now to break things back together or to fix things or to take it in the best direction. We need leadership. We need leadership. We need concise leadership. That's what we need, and that's what we're missing. That's why everybody is going this direction, that direction, that direction, because there's not one real solid mantra that everybody is following. Remember when, when uh, Obama said, uh, yes, we can, yes, we can. They were saying it all over the world. Everybody shouting, yes, we can. That was a positive. It wasn't selfish. It said, yes, we can. Everybody you want to be nationalistic and say, make America great again? So then that means what? So England shouldn't be great. Africa shouldn't be great. Haiti shouldn't be great. It should still be uh, treated like whatever. Cuba shouldn't be great. Only America. When America is made of people from all these countries. <laughs> Think. Think. Okay, I'm going to let you guys go now. Thanks for sharing this with me. I'm, I really appreciate you guys hanging with me because I'm hanging here with you. This is why I'm not one of those celebrities sit, sitting back enjoying, oh, I got a lot of hits. Oh, look, look how many uh, followers I have. I'm here to engage with you guys, okay? 
I'm here to engage. We're riding this together. I'm riding with you until this is all over with, okay? Check out. Make love great again. It's not just a song. It's a slogan. It's a solution, okay? Check it out, you guys. In the meantime, I love you. Stay safe. Protect yourselves when you really need to do it, okay? Protect yourselves and your loved one. I hate to see people still dying and that. And please, you guys, take a minute and catch your breath. If someone says something racist to you, ignore it, recognize the ignorance and just try to get away from it. Now, if they are pursuing you and you can't get away, you got to do what you got to do. But we shouldn't be popping off on each other at the slightest little, at the least little. You guys, let's stop this. We're better humans. We're better than this. Mankind, we're better than this, okay? All right? Spread the love. Make love again. I love you all. Until next time, you guys, please take care of yourselves and your loved ones, okay? Thank you very much. And mankind.